Hello everyone. I'm your host Shashi with you all on Women Dialogues. As you know, this dialogue is global dialogue where we bring women from all around the world from six different continents we have covered so far. We have brought 58 countries women and to create more voice for women and by women. And in the same way, today is our guest who is connecting with us from Ontario, Canada. Uh, Venda, she is a founder and principal of Workforce with a special emphasis on autism. And she is the founder of her own uh, consultancy, her work. She has lots of years of experience where she worked with the uh, uh, different uh, inclusion, revolution, and the, she launched lots of worldwide movement. And she is also catalyst behind the Women for Women. And she is creating lots of her work for the women as well. As you can hear and you can found in a little bit introduction, how she is creating in her work the impact. She's inspiring and she's motivating and she is same time aligning with the same way with women for women, along with her consultancy, along with her work. So she, she is having lots of stories, lots of work experience to share with us, to inspire, to motivate. So let's get dig into deeper and let's get, welcome our today's speaker, Venda. So welcome Venda on our today's Women Dialogue Global Talk Show. And we are really excited to have you. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. So Venda, I, I was just, uh, you know, briefing out about your work experience, your, uh, you know, the consultancy and all. We will definitely get into dig, uh, we will get into deeper what exactly you work for, your consultancy, your uh, women for women and all. But let's start talking about your childhood journey and the place you, where you born, how you grew up, what kind of uh, journey is look like in your own life, in your own uh, you know, terms, how you feel these, all your journey helped you and shaped you uh, to uh, move further next in your uh, life, in your career, in your uh, success path. Well, I grew up in a part of Canada that's called Nova Scotia, and I grew up in the northeastern part of it. And it was a university town. And my father was a professor there. And so I grew up feeling like I was different and I was different from my peers, but my family was different. I am the youngest of 10. My parents were older when I was born. My father was 51. My parents were well-educated and rather well-traveled. So all of these circumstances made me different from my peers, mm -hmm. but there was something else that was always there. Mm -hmm. And it was about my interests that were unique, especially for my age. And I noticed this and because of my differing interests and for other reasons, I did have challenges connecting with my peers and I had challenges in elementary school and I had challenges as I got older and I moved deeper into my educational journey. However, I didn't know until midlife that I actually have a different neurotype mm -hmm. from the majority of the mainstream population. So I found out about this a month before my 47th birthday, I was diagnosed with autism. So as you can imagine, a lot of things fell into place and started to make sense that hadn't made sense before. Yeah. So even though, even if we take the autism away, um, the town that I grew up in and the university and actually an international institute that's part of the university, these mm -hmm. were huge influences on me. And the fact that my parents were, were well-educated and were older and we did travel. I didn't travel as much as they did, but we did travel. Um, I had a lot of advantages. 
And so I learned and I still love learning. And these are all really big foundational pieces by which I still continue to guide my life today and my work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems very interesting. And especially as you shared that you was finding yourself very different and unique, but uh, those uniqueness characteristics, uh, how you navigate those unique characteristics and you found later maybe putting on those all different uniqueness into the alignment, I can say it. Like, okay, that's that's because of that. And it, it started making you more sense. But do you find those uniqueness and those characteristics uh, made you maybe very strong and different character in your own life and help you in your career? Well, definitely, you know, uh, in so many, in so many ways. I mean, adversity, for instance, does build character. It yeah. builds resilience. Yeah. Um, I I learned so much because yeah. I was different. You know, I learned um, to rely on myself. I learned to pull in supports. Mm -hmm. I learned to pull in resources. Right. Uh, so there, there's definitely good. You know, mm -hmm. through struggles, there, there's definitely good. I wouldn't certainly wish though the challenges that I had interacting with my peers on anyone, mm -hmm. um, especially because of a lack of diagnosis. Right. So I'm really working now towards more inclusive workplaces mm -hmm. so that all individuals can flourish and thrive right. regardless if they have mm -hmm. a different stereotype or because they're, different from the mainstream population yeah. in whatever form that may take. Um, mm -hmm. My differences also allowed me to connect with a lot of individuals whom I feel I wouldn't have had the good fortune of connecting mm -hmm. if it wasn't for my different brain makeup. So I did notice, for right. instance, that I formed wonderful relationships that you know, many I still have today um, in the home province where I grew up and then the different part of the country that I moved to at middle age uh, in what we call the prairie region of Canada. Mm -hmm. I noticed that I did develop relationships that um, many people from similar backgrounds as I, from the outside looking in similar backgrounds that I, mm -hmm. um, didn't necessarily form. Mm -hmm. And um, I really valued those. And again, yeah. now I have a different perspective as to why now that I know about right. my different brain makeup. But um, yes, the autism certainly posed a lot of challenges. And mm -hmm. uh, it also provides wonderful things in my yes. life. Mm -hmm. And I, I always do mention wonderful relationships that I've had and I can continue to have today. Mm -hmm. So when we are talking about uh, such kind of diagnosis or we, I will say not uh, diagnosis, I will say different kind of our mindset or neuro, uh, neuro system where you are saying, okay, I got to diagnose later, but be that always carrying some sort of very, very useful strength in their own unique way. If we see the great example in our history, many of our great scientists, uh, they had such kind of issues where they were not aware, but they were very focused because of their own these kind of issue. And they, they invented such great thing. They, they found such, uh, you know, they founded such great principle and theories in history. And when we talk all these about uh, how you find in your own life about acceptance or we, we heard about your challenges, it, it means some sort of way we still have a struggle to make people understand and make people accept our, unique, uh, our own unique way, that this is something we have unique. So when, when we are talking about it, how you find it that after knowing 
it made you help to create those uniqueness in more strongly and confidently or or it was like is the same way you are going on well i've definitely become more self aware i say self awareness is the greatest gift you can give yourself yes yeah. so i have a better sense now of my differences yes i have a better sense now of my differences that provide strengths yes and i have a much better sense now as to how i come across differently from the mainstream yeah and i know how to play to my strengths and i know now some areas that i need to work on and that right. i had to work on for a number of years now right. and yeah. that i will continue working mm -hmm. on at yes. the same time because i know of my difference and i'm able to share my differences mm -hmm. people i'm interacting with know there's mm -hmm. a reason for my differences and yeah. so we're connecting now in a different way. Right. I wasn't self-aware mm -hmm. and I didn't accept myself. Mm. So I wasn't coming to people from an equal place. I mm. really lacked self-esteem, mm. even though quite interestingly, I came across as being very confident, but mm. that was outward. That was how I was projecting outward. No one mm. knows how you feel on the inside. Yeah. And I had very low self-esteem. I had a very low view of myself because mm -hmm. of some of the background that I just shared with you. And then because of ongoing challenges, but I also right. love self-esteem because even my strengths, some people didn't appreciate. Some people did, mm -hmm. lots of people, did. but some yeah. people didn't appreciate my differences because sexism mm -hmm. and ableism persists mm -hmm. in our society. Exclusion. Yeah persists mm -hmm. in yes. our society. So there's a lot of things, and you just mentioned some things, and there's lots that we can learn from the neurodiverse population. Yes. That yes. diversity in all its forms is good. Mm -hmm. Diverse teams, if we look at research, the outcomes are that diverse teams perform at higher levels. They can even mm -hmm. outperform their peers in some instances, right. because of the different ways of thinking that emerge. Right. Right. So I always say that, number one, I focus on myself. And I have done that, and I will continue to do that. At the same time, I'm working to help build more inclusive workplaces and more inclusive communities. Because it's not just me, it's not just Wanda. Mm -hmm. The estimate is that the neurodiverse population is approximately 15% of the worldwide population. However, under diagnosis persists. So we have reason to believe that that 15% is much higher. Mm -hmm. So it's about inclusion right across the board. And then yes. the disability community widely is 1.3 billion mm -hmm. around the world. So it's about accepting yes and you use that word it's also about recognizing and celebrating diversity in all its yes. forms yes. and dropping our judgments yes and coming to people and really wanting to meet them where they are not where we think people should be based on mm -hmm. our own experiences and biases yeah so we have a long way to go yeah However, I, I do see progress and I've had the good fortune of seeing progress even in the past few years since I've had mm -hmm. Liberty Co. and during the time that I've moved my focus into the area of neurodiversity. Right. So I wonder when we are talking about all those kind of work which you are doing currently and uh, some sort of the after recognition of your own self that you are self-aware, uh, how you're putting your these uh, strength or as your efforts towards your work side where you know it is helping not only yourself but helping the your your work your community and society uh, by making them more inclusive more aware and more diverse how you're bringing that in a number of ways 
So I'm asked to speak frequently. Very nice. Wow. With organizations, different kinds. I can say wow. now that I've worked with the private sector, the public sector, and the not-for-profit sector. Mm. So people are certainly interested in my own story. Mm. You know, how did you go without a diagnosis of autism? Mm -hmm. uh, until the age of almost 47. So they're sharing my own story, but then yeah. they're sharing, you know, the research mm -hmm. and they're sharing uh, all kinds of information about neurodiversity. So mm -hmm. many people are still not aware. There's growing awareness, but so mm -hmm. many people are still not aware. So usually when I go into organizations, there's fundamental pieces that I touch on, you know, even a definition of neurodiversity and then, you know, my own story. And then neurodiversity is a dimension of overall diversity and disability is a dimension of overall diversity. And then uh, what can be done to recruit and retain individuals Mm -hmm. who are on the spectrum of neurodiversity. And I do focus on retention as much as I can because in what we're seeing so far, there's a lot about recruitment. Mm -hmm. you know, recruitment is, is an important piece, obviously. You have to get in the door. Yeah. But staying there is equally, if not more important. Mm -hmm. So I really like to highlight retention. I also had the good fortune of working on a project for seven months at Ryerson University in Toronto at right. what's called the Diversity Institute there and then within the diversity the Women Entrepreneurship Knowledge Hub. So mm -hmm. I actually conducted a mapping exercise with them understanding the supports and programs that are available for women with disabilities including mm -hmm. the neurodiverse population but not limited to. Right. And then we wrote a report including the findings and recommendations. Mm -hmm. So that will be coming out. And then I write as well. So mm -hmm. I write a lot of posts. I've written articles. My mm -hmm. own story was published in a magazine, Broadview Magazine, and then it was picked up in Reader's Digest Canada. Mm -hmm. And I also write tools that can be used. I was interviewed for a podcast recently and then as part of that, I wrote a primer called Neurodiversity 101, which is actually up on my LinkedIn page. So mm -hmm. that's a snapshot. There's more I could say, but that yes, I hopefully yes. gives you it, know, it, our it seems a lot. Yes, 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 it seems a lot. And I think our uh, audience and listener will take, you know, for the, from these inputs to get further their research and find in their own way how they can connect and you know, look forward, they, they're enhancing their knowledge or connection or building their, you know, skills when they are looking forward. Uh, so, Wanda, it seems like you, you are working a lot, you are really sharing and making uh, impact in your society and by your writings, by your, uh, you know, giving speeches in public places. Uh, when we talk all about it, we, it, it somewhat bring your own leadership and you are, we are talking about it's just not only about your own story, knowledge and experience. Along with that, you need to carry certain traits of leadership. So as you are doing all those things, how do you find your own leadership style? Hopefully inclusive. So I put that out there as much as I can mm -hmm. that my purpose, I found, I found it late, but my purpose is about inclusion. And that includes inclusive leadership. So for instance, when we're talking about talent and we're talking about neurodiverse talent and we look at right. some of the hiring programs, you know, whether they're around autism or other forms of, of neurodiversity, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily at the leadership level. Mm -hmm. It's about can we bring employees maybe not in the most senior positions. And no, not all your neurodiverse employees are going to be in the most senior positions. However, we need to have proportional representation. Mm -hmm. And the majority of the neurodiverse population, like the disability population, is either unemployed or underemployed, and that has to change. So what mm -hmm. I say is that neurodiverse talent belongs from the boardroom to the C-suite to the office cubicle. Yeah. 
And so I really hope people see in me and, and believe that I'm about really putting this into practice in every way representation matters and that you really need to see it to be it right. and so inclusion for me is true inclusion of everyone and so I always say that in terms of inclusion and disability I'm not asking to take anything away mm -hmm. so within inclusion is race ethnicity gender mm -hmm. sexual orientation mm -hmm religion, language, citizenship. I could go on and on and on, age, mm -hmm. all these facets of, of diversity are there and I'm not taking anything away, I'm adding disability. Okay. Okay. And I really hope people see that. It's never saying one aspect of diversity is more important than the other or one is less important, no. Mm -hmm. They're all important and we're adding disability. And the reason I'm focused on the area that I am in terms of disability and within that neurodiversity is because it's not as well known. Mm -hmm. we, we still think, at least in, in Canada, and mm -hmm. may I say North America, and mm -hmm. I am starting to connect more with people from Europe, that diversity is still seen as race and ethnicity and disability is yes. not there. And yeah. want to add disability. So that's another thing that I really hope that comes across. And then yeah. if I could add one more, it would be the framework of intersectionality. Mm -hmm. And so that is, no one is one aspect of right. their identity only people mm -hmm. are about multiple aspects. So I'm a woman, yes. I'm a woman with a disability. I'm a white woman with a disability. I am now middle age. I am Canadian. I am Canadian born. I'm Canadian citizen. English is my first language. These are all aspects of my identity and that we really need to pay attention to particular power structures that are a play. So I am a woman with a disability. And because of that, I experience barriers and discrimination. And we've talked about some of these. However, I'm still very, very privileged. And mm -hmm. in Canada, for example, racialized women, indigenous women, women who do not have post-secondary education experience mm -hmm. greater barriers than I do. And so I need to be really, really aware of that. And that's another thing about disability is that it cuts across all aspects of identity. And so I always try to highlight that. I realize mm -hmm. others with disability experience greater barriers than I do. And I do tend to focus on women because women as a whole experience greater barriers than mm -hmm. men. There's always exceptions to this. You know, we're talking in generalities because when we look at outcomes, mm -hmm. uh, racialized groups uh, in Canada, in North America, uh, still suffering greatly and we need to change that. Yes. So yeah. when I talk about inclusion, those are some of the things, there's so many more yeah. I yes. share, but those so are some. Wanda, this is this is some of the points where we can get and we, we can get the flow by, like how these things are important, why we need to work on that, why we are uh, you know having a lot of uh, work still required to do on that. And when we talk all about it, we feel like we are still not very near to this. And you know seeing recent incidences, George Floyd and many more. It always makes us feel like we are we are very far. We are very far it's still from you know mm -hmm. where we meet. And in many sectors, in many ways, when we talk about technological development or many, many ways, we have developed as a human race, we have developed ourselves way ahead. Mm -hmm. What is lacking? How you feel what is lacking as a human? I'm not talking about particular uh, breaking our diversity into different, but I'm trying to say bringing all diversity and more bringing more inclusiveness approach when we are bringing these things in de developing good technologies, good 
developing what we are lacking to bring as a humanity why we are lacking and what is lacking i think you answered your own question what's lacking is the humanity and mm -hmm. seeing the humanity in it yes yes yeah whether it's george floyd mm -hmm. because police officer who murdered him mm -hmm. is white and George mm -hmm. Floyd was black, mm -hmm. whether it's our indigenous peoples, our first yes. people in Canada yeah. Yeah. who have been treated horrendously, mm -hmm. that racism mm -hmm. continues today. Yeah. A Muslim family was targeted and killed in Ontario mm -hmm. on Sunday. Mm -hmm. For some reason, in 2021, mm -hmm. we do not see the humanity in those who are different from us. Mm -hmm. Even though Dr. Isoldane Abulish, known mm -hmm. as the Gaza doctor, mm -hmm. who was born in Palestine and practiced in Israel, says, the cry of a Muslim baby at birth and the cry mm -hmm. of an Israeli baby at birth are the same. Mm -hmm. Even though a member of the disability population in India can be very similar to a member of the disability population in Canada. Mm -hmm. We look for differences we don't look for our common similarities yeah at the heart mm -hmm. there's more similarities than differences yes. we yes. don't see the humanity mm -hmm. of course i have not suffered mm -hmm. my family has not suffered any way like george floyd's family or the muslim family in london mm -hmm. and because of our privilege we probably won't Mm. However, I know as a woman with a disability who has a different brain makeup that I have been othered. I have been treated as if I am less than mm. because I am different. I have been prejudged. Mm. I have had ill intent projected on me. Mm. For some reason... That's multiplied. How can we quantify that? Multiplied to the hundreds, multiplied to the thousands. How do we quantify that? But against racialized individuals, indigenous peoples, people mm -hmm. from different religions yeah. than the population. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's heightened and heightened and heightened. This is a long way around. I think you were right when you said it and you asked the question. It's about seeing the humanity in others. Mm -hmm. Until we do that, we're going to continue to see these horrific crimes. Mm -hmm. And it really, really saddens me. It more than saddens me. At the same mm -hmm. time, it outrages me. Right. Yeah, that's so true. So when we talk about all about these uh, bringing our work, our place in diversity, inclusiveness, you are also founder and you have uh, you are working as a consultant in your own uh, company where you work uh, with bringing different these kind of aspects in your work. How you work and would you like to share some of your work, how you created uh, your work with different your employees and have you made that impact? Sure. Well, first of all, I want to say I did not find or I'm not the founder of the Inclusion <laughs> Revolution. So that no, this was founded company, by Caroline I think is it called Liberty. You are founder and principal of Liberty yes, Corporation. Liberty. Yeah. And there you bring a lot of these inclusive and in diversity um, work in your working uh, environment. So how you bring that and when you're bringing that, how you create uh, impact on your business, in your business, in your clients, like that? Well, first of all, through my lived experience. 
And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that everyone who works in the area of neurodiversity needs to have lived experience. And mm -hmm. I collaborate with people who do not have lived experience. So there's, you know, there's much to bring um, from mm -hmm. your own background and circumstances. However, mm -hmm. because the story is still not well known, particularly the story of women mm -hmm. who are neurodiverse and particularly the story of women at middle age, that is something that I bring that's unique. Something else mm -hmm. that I bring is that, and you mentioned this, I have been a leader. So I've had the really good fortune of being in some fairly senior positions in the charitable yeah. sector. Right. So I bring that and mm -hmm. these points resonate with the yeah. organizations that I work with. They're really interested in my own experiences and then my own background. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, what I've done because you know, even though I wasn't working to build capacity in terms of neurodiversity, I have a lot of experience working with organizations to build their capacity mm -hmm. to increase their support and profile. And really what I'm doing now is increasing support and profile for a cause. It's just not through charitable gifts. Nice. So it's about building capacity. It's about knowledge transfer. It's about understanding mm -hmm. what organizations are already doing. So for mm -hmm. instance, when I go in and I present to an organization, I find out where they are. Now I can't find out everything, of course, but mm -hmm. I try to get a sense of where they are, what they're doing, mm -hmm. and how they present themselves in terms of diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. You know, what are their communications materials like? What is their social media presence like? Mm -hmm. And then it's about, okay, where do you want to go? And what do you want and what's important to you? Now, there's some things I share, and there's basic tenets that I share mm -hmm. with every organization. And then there's customization. Mm -hmm. But there are basic things I share because, one, I need to get everyone on a similar understanding, you know, for mm -hmm. us to, to, to converse. And then the other thing is that I have a responsibility to share basic information about neurodiversity so that we can mm -hmm. build an understanding. There's a lot of misunderstandings. There's a lot of myths. There's a lot of stereotypes about neurodiversity. Yeah, yeah. And um, I need to go in and, and help debunk them. I feel a responsibility on behalf of the community. And I feel a responsibility on behalf of researchers who are wor working really hard uh, to help ensure you know, clear understanding and, and one that is actually research-based. Mm -hmm. And so I have collaborated with some researchers. I participate in research as much as I can whenever there's an opportunity to participate in a study, I do. Mm -hmm. And then I promote that. I promote, you know, the research that's happening, but it's a really changing and dynamic area. You know, I, I always say to myself, you know, I, I customize presentations because it's the right thing to do, but I also have to because it's changing. <laughs> Sometimes it feels every day yeah. or, you know, at least, you know, weekly or monthly or like, there's just so much, like looking from year to year, there's just so much. And that's a good thing. You know, it's been an under-researched area. So it's yeah. good that it's changing in dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, and, um yeah so those are just some so, of the things that so I do. venda like it seems like you you are doing a lot of work and but still we need to share the uh, awareness we need to talk about and that's what we are here today to talk about your work how you are doing your work and same time how it is important so uh talking about uh, such kind of work, what can be major tools to give them uh you know, people or our audience who are listening or watching us that to create that understanding, what can be the basic tools for them? Can you give them some basic tools, maybe in numbers or in points, what can be basic tools for them to start understanding, to start developing that? Yeah. Uh, understanding. Sure. So for instance, on my LinkedIn profile is a primer that mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier that I wrote for a podcast that I was interviewed for. What is neurodiversity? Why is it important to understand? So I encourage folks to go to my LinkedIn profile and take a look at that. I also encourage other folks, if they're interested, on my LinkedIn profile are some features mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so articles and interviews and a video that I shot for a conference. Mm-hmm. And then www.libertyco.ca is my Liberty Co website. And I encourage people to go there. Again, links um, to articles, interviews. Um, so I am a for-profit business. So I do need to charge for my services. Mm-hmm. However, to increase awareness and to increase acceptance and to give people a sense of what I'm doing, mm-hmm. I do put these resources out there, whether it's on my LinkedIn page or on my website, so that you know people can access information mm-hmm. for free. Right. And so I do that. And I'm also quite active on LinkedIn. It is my main platform. So I do react to a lot of comment. I post a lot of content. Mm -hmm. And so if people want to connect with me, um, they'll also see that I post a lot of articles uh, that they Mm -hmm. can learn from. And I always offer an intro. I don't just post, you know, I I offer an intro to it. Mm -hmm. So, Um, and, you know, of course, it's not just about me. (laughs) Um, Just Google neurodiversity. You know, there's so many people working in the field. Um, Google neurodiversity and then within that Google, you know, neurodiversity in women or neurodiverse employment and, you know, encouragingly enough, more and more articles are coming up, more research is coming up and, Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, that's something I do. I I spend a lot of my time learning. I have to, to stay Mm -hmm. on top. I just mentioned it's a really dynamic and changing area. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then within, you know, people find, thought leaders they like to follow or they they find podcasts that they like to listen to and you know within that there's uh you know specific areas that that people find are particularly aligned with their own personal missions and yeah. and uh they can they can zero in on those mm-hmm. so when we talk about all your professional works and links we are going to put in description definitely but when we talk all your work which you are creating and you are doing uh to be, you know, this is since where this this is the field where we need to work more and more. And you are somewhat you are doing your own contribution from your side. How you find uh, the platform like Women Dialogue is equally, you know, having importance or is, is needed to have such dialogues where we need to create more uh, such awareness or something. So that is definitely true. And the main reason I sparked Women for Women is because I noticed as we try to advance towards gender equality, and we're still so far away, but as we try to advance, I always believe that we'd go further faster if women supported each other more and you know I'm really grateful to you that you have this series and you are obviously so supportive of other women (laughs) and you really are practicing that support and enabling that support and furthering that support and there's so many areas within gender equality and gender equity that require attention but a contribution that I thought I might be able to make is by supporting highlighting recognizing and celebrating other women because as I mentioned I find it's something that doesn't happen enough I've been really disappointed and I've been very personally affected throughout mm-hmm. my life and my career by how other women mm-hmm. have treated me and how I've seen other women treat women mm-hmm. and it's something that I feel like we can change yes. and then if we work together and change that, we will see equality sooner. It will not be tomorrow. We're years away. Some, I've heard the estimates in terms of how many decades we are away. However, we can get there sooner. And mm-hmm. so that's what Women for Women is about. And then, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I do focus on women in terms of disability and in terms of neurodiversity, you know, I do mm-hmm. focus a lot on women um, mm-hmm. for some of the reasons that we just touched on, you know, they experience more barriers yeah. at, on a whole, not mm-hmm. in every individual case, but on a whole compared to men. Mm-hmm. 
And so when we talk all about what the last message would you like to give our audience or our listeners? I'm asking them to join the inclusion revolution. And so, you know, as we just touched on a few moments ago, founded by Carolyn Casey and Paul Pullman about revolutionizing the way we think about disability, especially disability employment. Mm -hmm. So whenever I speak, I ask people to follow the inclusion revolution, consider joining the inclusion revolution. And I'm inviting those who are interested to follow women for women hashtag as well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So thank you, Wanda, for sharing uh, your journey, your work, and your uh, all the mission which you are, you know, giving to your life, to your work, and giving the purpose for creating better society. So thank you, thanks a lot for sharing all, and once again, thanks to all our listeners who are listening and watching us as. We always mention that we've tried to bring our always unique speakers who can bring you new insight, new knowledge, new wisdom to create better yourself, to grow yourself, to develop yourself. And that's our purpose and mission. You are not alone in your journey. We are here to support you. If you are looking for any kind of support which is related to inclusion and diversity, Wanda is our very uh, passionate, very experienced speaker as you can hear her. I'm putting her details in, in the description as well so you can get connected with her if you're looking for any work support. Along with that, if you need any kind of any query or question do you have, put in the comment below. We will try to uh, find those answers and we will work for that. And looking forward to have you in the next episode to create more stories, more inspiration and more motivation for our life. And yes, as I always say, Please share and subscribe because we are creating change for inspiration. We are creating change for change. So with this note, I would like to say thank you. See you in the next time with new episode, with new speaker and with new knowledge. Thank you. <laughs>